In this video, we're going to talk about how to format text using R Markdown. The first kind of text formatting we're going to talk about is how to format different headings and sections in an R Markdown document. It's actually very simple to do this. To make headings and sections with different levels, you simply use the hashtag or pounds symbol. One hashtag or one pound symbol will indicate the first level, two hashtags will indicate the second level, and you can keep on going and going and going. And if you type words after the hashtag, those are going to be larger than the regular text. I should point out here that while in regular R and R scripts, the hashtag denotes a comment, it does not do the same thing in R Markdown. So comments in R Markdown use different symbols. The next kind of text formatting we're going to talk about is font styles and effects. So there's a ton of different font styles and effects that you can use in R Markdown. I'm only gonna talk about some of the main ones that I use. So to get italic text, you put the text you want to italicize in stars or in a set of underscores. If you want bold text, then you put the text you want to bold in two stars or two underscores. If you want to use a typewriter font, which is sort of like the computer code font, then you put it in two back ticks. So a back tick, text, back tick will produce the desired computer code once you render the file. To get an in dash, you want to use dash dash or minus minus. To get an m dash, which is a slightly longer version, though it doesn't show it up here, show it up like that here, you use three dashes in a row. Superscript is when the characters are usually smaller and then above the text just to the left, and a subscript is the same thing but below. To get a superscript in R Markdown, then you use caret symbol and caret symbol surrounding the text you want to superscript and to subscript a text. You do the same thing, but you use tilde on one side and tilde on the other side. Strike through is when you take text and you literally strike a, a strike a line through the text, and that's obtained by two tildes on either side of the text that you want to strike through. To escape special characters, so special characters are are really characters that do certain things or special things in R Markdown, like the star symbol here, the underscore symbol, the dollar sign symbol, backslash, the backward tick symbol here, then you have to actually put a slash in the character that is special. So you can see here we have backslash star, backslash underscore, backslash dollar sign, backslash backslash, if we wanted to show a star, underscore, dollar sign, backslash, respectively. The one exception to that is if you want the back tick symbol. And this actually gets really complicated. It's not fun to do when I when you're typesetting these documents, when you want to show that back tick. Uh, but, to get, but to get a single back tick, you do back tick, back tick, space, back tick, space, back tick, back tick. And to get to this show up in my R Markdown document, I actually had to put triple back ticks uh, on either side of this. As you can see, if I go back to the R Markdown document that generated this. To get a footnote in R Markdown, you take the text you want to put a footnote by, and then you use the caret symbol here. And then in square brackets, you type the footnote that you want to add to your text. So pretty simple. I have one right here. So I click on that, it takes me down. This is a footnote. If you're a data scientist, it's quite likely that you're going to need to render mathematical equations. And the best markup language for rendering mathematical equations is LaTeX. And this is pronounced LaTeX or LaTeX. So I, I pronounce LaTeX, that's how I learned it when I was an undergraduate. You can pronounce it LaTeX, that's okay. But it is not okay to pronounce it LaTeX, even though that's what it looks like uh, in the English language. And if you're familiar with LaTeX, then essentially what you can realize is that you can add mathematical equations using dollar sign for inline math equations and dollar sign, dollar sign for display math equations, just like you would in LaTeX. Uh, so for example, if you typed this into an R Markdown document, the rendered re result would look something like this. And so you can see here that inside a dollar sign and a dollar sign, I wrote slash beta. And this tells R Markdown to use LaTeX to render the beta symbol, which is what is shown here, okay? So let's do something together. So your turn. So let's create a new R script, and you can do that using Control-Shift-N or Command-Shift-N if you're on a Mac, and then replace the contents of that file with this content right here, okay? 
Once you do that, save it, call it badjokes.rmd, and then click, click the preview button and render the results. So I've essentially already done this, so I gave it a different file name. And so I'm just gonna go to that in R Markdown. And this is meant to show you visually the relationship between how you would type something in the R Markdown document and how it would render. And so I'm gonna click the preview button here. I'm using an R notebook, so I have output HTML notebook here. And when I click preview, R Studio will render that document pretty quick. And so the title of this notebook is Bad Jokes, and you'll see why here in just a second. So this right here, I use the, the hashtag symbol to get a first level header, a second level header, and a third level header. And you can see I get first level in the largest size font, second level in the second largest font, the third level in the third largest size font. So I wrote this is italic text in single star symbols, and that produced italicized, test over, italicized text over here. I put this is bold text over here and I inside two star symbols. And on the right hand side, when it's rendered, I have this is bold text. Okay, and you can see that the text is bolded compared to the italic text or the text that's below. So if you want computer code, I put that in the back tick symbol here. And you can see that this does look like a computer code. And in fact, there's a light gray shading. It's hard to see here uh, on the compiled document, but there's a, a slight gray background in behind the computer code to let us know that that is computer code. And then we had the question, what's the difference between in dash and m dash? So in dash, to create an in dash, I have to use dash dash. To create an m dash, I have to use dash dash dash. And when I return to the compiled document here, I can see that the in dash really just looks like a single minus sign essentially, whereas the m dash looks a little bit longer. So that's the difference between the in dash and the m dash. To get a superscript, so I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see the render dot or the so we can see the R markdown file over here. So now the bad jokes start. So how can I add a superscript to this? Okay, it says like this, and you can see to the right of the word this, I use the caret symbol, caret symbol, and between those two things, I wrote the word superscript. So we get a superscript on this. Ha ha ha! So funny. And then I have, that's a joke if you didn't get the subtext. And around subtext, I have tilde and tilde. And you can see that the tilde tilde caused the subtext thing right here to be placed in a superscript style or a subscript style, meaning that it's uh, below the other text and slightly smaller font. So while two bad jokes in a row, I say I'd like to strike that from my memory. And around that here, I have tilde tilde and tilde tilde. And when I render that, Using our markdown, you can see that that is, now has this strike through effect through it. And so we have the line going through that. And then I say, I wish I could escape these bad jokes. This is a play on the fact that uh, we had to escape the protected symbols here. So you can see right here, I actually wanted the star star on either side of escape. But in order to get that star to render, I had to put backslash star on one side and backslash star on the others. And that let us know that we were trying to render the special character and they showed up correctly over here. And then lastly, I have, but I guess this will just be an unpleasant footnote. And then I added a footnote here uh, by adding the caret symbol and then in square brackets, unpleasant footnote. You can see that's actually what it rendered here in my compiled document.